Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode I'm going to be covering the Essential Audios panel, uh, which is found up here under your arrangement. This is kind of a good way of doing some sound mixing. They've added some features uh, in the 2018 updates that are pretty significant and uh, work actually pretty well for sound mixing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to uh, my arrangements here and I'm going to go to Audio. We're going to arrange this and it brings up our Essential Audio or Essential Sound is what they call it. So you have your Essential Sound panel over here. This is very similar to what you do when you arrange for things like uh, titling, uh, when you arrange for graphics and you arrange for color correction, it brings up this panel on the side which aids you in doing that specific feature, whether it be titling, audio, or color correction. In this instance, we're going to be doing audio. And a couple things that you do as you change things over here, let me show you when you select a clip over here, an audio clip, you're going to see it brings up uh, some categories over here and we're going to be doing some changes in here which will actually add an effect to your audio clip. And let's do a quick little version of that. I'm going to go assign this as a sound effects. We'll get into more details but I kind of want to show what this does as you start changing things over here. On this clip it is changing the, the items on those clips. And if you go to your effect controls panel and look, you're going to notice that it added uh, an effect right here, a studio reverb effect by affecting items over in this essential panel, it is added. It is added an effect, and whatever you've done over, or whatever you have done over here, set the parameters for that effect. So, just kind of want to show how that works there really quick. But I'm going to go back to my audio track mixer here and show you what you've got over here. Right here, you've right here. You will notice that uh, I've got one slider on the side right here, and what this represents is it represents however many tracks you have used utilized down in your timeline. Right now, I just have one, so it gives me one slider. I'm going to zoom up to my clip here and kind of show you how these things work really quick. First of all, if your tracks are too small, if your track height is not too high like this, you're not going to notice any line on this, which is your actual uh, audio level for that specific track. I'm going to hit Shift Plus and it will go up to a larger track height here. And you'll notice this line right here. What this is, is it's your audio, uh, it's basically your audio gain line. They call it the keyframe line. If you go up to your little wrench here, if you don't see that and it's, the tracks are larger, you can go up to your little wrench here, click on that, and go up to show audio keyframes right here. And if it's not showing, you click that, it will show the audio keyframes right there. And that basically controls volume. If I grab this and turn it down, it'll turn your audio down. If I grab this and turn it up, it'll turn my audio up. And it will show the amount of decibels that you're turning it up right here. And you'll notice what happens here is if I grab this little uh, keyframer here and I drag this upwards, and you'll notice it jumps up at here as well, and it shows you that I've increased this by 5.7 decibels upwards. If I drag it down, it's gone 0.7, it's gone negative 7 decibels below uh, the, 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 its uh, neutral point, which is 0. So I just want to show you how those sliders work. And the same thing here, if I grab the slider and drag it down here, you'll notice down here it will change your keyframe line and turn down the audio as well. And it shows you how many decibels you've taken it down or how many decibels you've taken it up. If you want to take it a specific numerical value, you want to increase by 12 decibels, you click here. If you want to take that up uh, 12 decibels, which would be uh, like a negative six, I'm gonna click on the I'm gonna click on this field and go negative six on my numpad and hit enter and it jumps up to negative six and you notice down here it has jumped up there. So if I want to reset that I'm gonna click on this, hit zero, enter, and my volume keyframe level has been turned down. A couple other things you can do here to mix audio is you can hold down control or it's command on a Mac, and you can click here and add keyframes. If you want it to ramp from one level to another, you can grab one keyframe and turn it up, and your audio will gradually go from this point and start turning up over that much time. And you can uh, hit, hold down control and click as many of, the, of those as you want, and you can make it turn up and down and control the volume over the duration of a clip. You can do this live as well as we're uh, as we're playing through a clip. This is kind of crummy audio right now. It's just kind of windy noise on the, on the microphone here. But as we play through this, let me show you. Right now, you're not seeing it because I don't have enough room up here so if I move my mouse over and hit tilde it'll make this go full screen and you'll notice you've got mute solo and uh, right keyframes the M will mute your audio it will mute that track uh, the S will solo that it will only play that track and mute everything else and then if you turn on this keyframer here what you can do is as you play through your clip you can grab your slider and start dragging it up and down I just drag that up and down and you hear the volume turn up and down, but look what it's done here. It's recorded those keyframes. You got this as I play it live, it turns it up and down, up and down. And this is really helpful. I kind of don't use these as much uh, as I do just doing keyframing down in the timeline. Uh, if you have a something like a MIDI uh, device or something with sliders or, or, or a mixer, a digital mixer that you can, an actual physical mixer that you can connect to your uh, computer, those are usually compatible with Premiere and you can connect them and make them control all these specific channels uh, on the fly, which is kind of nice. I'm going to undo that and let's get into audio mixing here. So I've got this project that's been edited. I recommend get your editing done, get your visual editing done before you start doing the audio mixing. And audio mixing is going to be one of the final uh, stages of your, of your uh, post-production. 
So make sure you get your editing done, get it as visually locked as possible so you don't have to do many changes. And now we're going to start off with our audio mix. We got a little uh, narrative short here. This was a student film where a girl is sitting here reading at night and um, where somebody is kind of watching her and somebody's knocking on the window and trying to scare her. So we'll show you this. It's just like a one and a half minute short that we'll sh I'll show at the end of the at the end of the tutorial. But as I play this, we've got the visual edits going. And you can hear knocking cues. You can hear talking from the people in the background, from the director. And the audio is kind of all over the place. But what we want to do first is we want to work with the existing audio. But we're going to start working on adding sound effects. We're going to start working on adding um, ambient noise. And we're going to work on, on mixing in some music. And this project doesn't have any dialogue in it. We're going to show you how to mix dialogue in, in, uh, in the next episode. But let's play through this. And right here we got the kind of this loud windy noise that happens at the beginning. So we want to get rid of that. So what I can do is I can just simply uh, cut that off. We're going to get in the panel here in a little bit, but let me cut that off. I'm going to hit C for my razor. Go up here, make sure that my video is all locked so I'm not messing with my video. And I'm going to click and cut that. V for my arrow tool, select this and delete it and it's gone. So I got rid of that wind there, but now we need to replace it with something. As I play through this some more, we have that knocking noise and we have a knock over here and I'm going to get rid of that because we're going to add those back in. I want to use some of this existing audio and uh, add some ambient noise throughout. After the knock, let's get rid of that. And actually here is a really good stretch of ambient audio and since she's not doing anything, I may wish to grab the audio from here and use it for my ambient noise. So what I'm going to do is select that, I'm going to copy that, I'm going to select this, I'm just going to hold down Option and I'm going to drag this to the left and that duplicates it. It's, at, it's Option on a Mac and uh, Alt on a PC, the Alt key. So if I ever say Option, I actually mean Alt, and if I need to say Alt, I actually mean Option, depending on what sort of, si sort of system you're on. So now I've got that nice ambient track at the beginning. I'm going to uh, do a crossfade, I'm going to do a crossfade in, Control shift d i got to make sure that nothing is selected, first of all. Control-Shift-A to deselect everything on my timeline. Control-Shift-D, and it adds this fade in here. This is basically fade in. i got that nice ambient noise. I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need it. Let's see how far I can stretch this out before we get into noises here. It looks like i got quite a ways here until it gets into a knockdown here. But I'm going to use that as the ambient noise. I'm going to cut that off before I get to the ambient noise. C for my razor tool. And actually, another way of doing that, your shortcut, you can do Control or Command k just think of K as in cut, and uh, that cuts a line right in it right there. I'm going to hit V for my arrow tool, select this, and delete it. And, I'm, and this ambient noise right here works really well, and there's nothing going on that I need to use from this, so I can hold down Option or Alt and drag it over. Let's get rid of that fade in right there, since it duplicated it. Drag it and butt it up against that. And now I'm going to do uh, Control-Shift-D to do a cross-dissolve, so it does a dissolve between these two. It turns one down while turning one up. And that sounds nice and smooth. But before I keep doing this, what I want to do is start start thinking about my audio levels here. Uh, what audio level I want these clips to be at. So let's look at this little track right here. Uh, let's look over here at my little um, at my decibel meter over here on the side. Uh, what zero does on your on your audio mixer is it, uh, this is where audio plays so loud that it distorts. You'll see these audio levels jumping as they get louder and they'll be lower as they get quieter. Watch this as this gets louder. Let's move over here. See these waveforms? Your waveforms here uh, kind of show audio getting louder and quieter, louder and quieter. And then like here's those three distinct knocks right there. And you see this pump up three times as, as we play through that. Now uh, what we've got here is we are in a stereo environment. Zero is where your audio clips or distorts. You don't ever want to hit zero. You want to avoid uh, zero at all costs. Uh, but we are in a stereo environment which has a di has a dynamic range of what they say ne uh, what they call negative twelve. And what they mean by that dynamic range is basically for your lo loud audio you have a dynamic range of twelve decibels. Uh, we're mixing for negative uh, twelve. That's kind of comes across as a standard if we if we come over here and we do a new item and we're going to do new bars and tone. This shows like uh, audio calibrated for a stereo environment. I hit OK. We load that into the source monitor. Let me bring, let's put that in the timeline really quick. I'm going to hit uh, the slash above my enter key and I go to the end and drop this in. And let's play through some of these bars and tone and show you where the, the, the tone is calibrated for. Ow, that hurts, but that's, uh, that is, um, that hits negative 12. So that, that's, this is a stereo environment where uh, I've got a dynamic range of negative 12. If you're working in surround sound, uh, the standard, I believe, is negative 20 uh, that they're doing. So it has a higher dynamic range uh, for surround sound than it does for a stereo, a stereo environment. 
And what that basically just means is your audio, your your dialogue levels, you're going to be going for around negative 12 for kind of a average dialogue. And then everything is going to be kind of subject, subjective and what what sounds quiet, what sounds loud around negative 12. Uh, anything above negative 12 would be starting to get loud. Everything below negative 12 will start getting quieter and quieter. And things like ambient noise so it can usually hit depending on the type of ambient noise, like uh, room tone, maybe around like negative 42 and uh, and so on. But let's let's go to the beginning here and play through this and listen to our audio. That room tone is really, really quiet. It's going around like a negative 45 here at the most. So what we're going to do, let's start using our panel. I'm going to select this clip and we're going to move over here and we're going to define this. This is what's cool about this panel. Is you can, it's got some uh, pre-built features uh, for that type of audio. This is going to be ambience. I'm going to assign that as ambience and it adds an effect, it adds a filter to this clip. And now it's going to ask you, uh, in, in almost any audio you use, you can have a, anywhere from mild to, to heavy re reverb or echoing depending on the environment that you're in. And in a room, you're going to have a, a very kind of mellow uh, reverb. If you're in a warehouse, you'll have very, very strong reverb. All right now we're in this room and it's got outside ambience. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to say this is room ambience. And we're not in a large room. We are just in a regular room. So I'm going to hit room. This is very subtle, but it adds a little bit of echo to the ambient noise. And you'd be able to hear it better if there were noises like footsteps and people walking around and moving. You'd hear a little bit of, it would add a little bit of reverb to this audio. So I play through it, and uh, right now, notice that and my audio is still pretty quiet. You do have a clip volume level down here, and uh, this level is really quiet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and drag it up. And I'm, I'm going to show you something that I, I like to do a little bit more than using this down here. As we play through it, it's louder now, but uh, but the, what has happened to the waveforms is they've kind of stayed the same. It's just boosting that current clip there. So we're going to change the nature of this clip. What I like to do is I select the clip and I hit the letter G. This is a gain. It redefines the clip. It adds some gain to it and redefines the clip as if it's already, it treats it as if it's already a louder clip. So I'm going to gain this. Let's go by about 10 decibels and see what we get. Hit enter and the waveforms have actually uh, increased in size there. It's like change the nature of the file. Now as we play through it, I like the sound of that, that level there. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to select that and hit gain, and I'm going to go 10 decibels. Hit enter, and it increases that. Now, I'm, only, I'm not going to have to do that anymore. I'm not really going to have to do that anymore because I'm just going to copy and paste this here. Uh, but I am going to go to ambient because I haven't defined this one yet, and I'm going to define this as room ambience. It checks my reverb. It's added that effect to it now, and now I've got kind of that natural sounding reverb. And I've got a crossfade, so it sounds nice and smooth. This crossfade's not here. Sometimes you'll hear shifts in the audio. Let's listen. Very little, little shift there. It's very subtle, but uh, you can do Control Shift D or Command Shift D on a Mac, and it adds that cross. You have to be right on the edit, and the way I land on that edit, by the way, is I use arrows up and down. I, I go arrow up to go to the left, and it lands on an edit. One more time, right there is on my edit. Control Shift D or Command Shift D. There we go. She so hears the knock. Looks back down, and I'm going to do this since nothing's going on. I'm just going to grab this clip here. It already has the effect on it, so I don't have to keep doing that effect to it. And I'm going to drag it to the right, right there, and it does a uh, and it duplicates the clip. Control Shift A to deselect my clip. Arrow up. Control Shift D to add a crossfade. And there we go. And I'm going to continue to do this for the entire uh, for the entire uh, movie for the entire scene here. I'm going to go from beginning to end. And I'm going to control my my. Uh, this was shot with a boom mic and a separate audio recorder uh, to get ambient noise. And uh, you can hear her walking around. This is a very quiet movie, so you don't. She doesn't make much noise. Uh, but I'm going to continue to do this till I get to the very end of my uh, timeline, and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. All right, I finished mixing my ambient track here on the top. That's a, and I shouldn't I shouldn't say just ambient. This this is the actual audio that was recorded on set, and I got that to the level that I like it, and I've got these transitions to smooth it out in between. And one thing that I did I want you to notice is I move into the clip here. All of a sudden I've got no audio here, and then down here as well I've got no audio here. I did not I cut off the audio for on two instances where she actually leans outside and looks out the window that that actually goes outside like right here. As she's walking toward the window, it cuts and there's no audio because I'm going to add the own audio. For the, uh, I'm going to add different audio for when she is outside. So it just does these uh, these precise cuts right on the edits there. Then it cuts back inside and the ambient noise comes back. See, I left some of that noise in when she sits down. You got the sound of the book. 
got her standing up. So now you can kind of hear these sounds as she sits down, picks up the book, and you can hear a little bit of reverb there just for the, to kind of add ambient room, just kind of that natural echo that would exist in the room. So next, let's start working on a new track here. And I have collected a bunch of effects from uh, the internet. Where you can go to, a good, a good site to go to for sound effects is freesound.org. On freesound.org, you're going to have to create a free login. And this is what this is, is a big database where people uh, share their sound effects. And there's uh, some really good quality ones. If we type in, uh, let's type in crickets here. So I'm going to be looking for some nighttime ambient noise. And you can click on these and play them. And you can find the sound effects that you like. Keep in mind that the higher quality ones are going to be AIF, AIFs and waves, uh, and the lesser quality ones are going to be MP3s. But sometimes the MP3s are, have high frequencies, and they're, and it's, they're actually uh, pretty good quality. So it just really depends on who uploaded it and what quality it was when they uploaded it. But once you find the ones you like, you can click on them, you can download them, and then you can collect them. Collect them into a lo location to your production folder, and then import them into Premiere. And I've already done that here. I've got a folder with a bunch of the sound effects where I'm going to be using, ones that I've searched and found online here and uh, crickets is one of them here and we're going to start adding some more ambient noise to kind of build this up and sweeten our, our, our audio here now there's one that i really like here this one that nighttime one i found as i play through this, this is one that i found on uh, freesound.org Got some nice mellow crickets. Now, you are going to be hearing the crickets while that we're inside the house here. And the reason why we're going to be hearing those crickets is because the window is open. At one point, she walks over and looks out the window, and the window is open. So we're going to be hearing some mild cricket noises outside. So what I can do here is I'm going to go down my timeline. I'm going to change, by the way, I did not mention source patching here. Right now, uh, my source patching is set to audio channel 1. Whatever is in the source monitor is going to set uh, the, uh, those files on that track. So I'm going to grab my source patching and move it to audio track 2 and make sure that it's activated right there. So now my source patching, it's reading this audio file here. It's going to be dropping them on this on the second track here. I'm going to zoom up plus 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 and uh, I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip, hit I for end point and I'm going to leave an open out point. Uh, no out point on this at all. It's, I'm not going to leave it. I'm not going to put an out point on this. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go to my timeline, hit I where I want it to start. And this is called a three point edit. I'm going to move down toward the end of this because I want it to cut right there and suddenly get louder crickets. So I'm going to do O for out point, and I'm going to hit period to drop it down into my timeline. By the way, this is on the first frame of the next clip. So actually, I want to arrow back one frame and go on the last frame of the previous clip and hit O for out point. And now I'm going to hit period to drop it in, and it will take uh, that clip and play it. I'll zoom out here. It'll play it uh, from my in point on my timeline to the out point on my uh, timeline, and there it cuts. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to grab my crickets. I'm going to do, because here when it cuts outside, it's going to be louder. So I'm going to, on my timeline, I'll hit in point, go down, out point, and you can also drop it on. You can drop the whole thing on and, and cut it as well. I kind of like this method. I'm going to arrow back one frame so it's on the ending frame of my previous clip, out point, period, drop it in. I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to do this a couple more times here, in point, over here, arrow up to land there, arrow back one frame, O for out point, period, drop it in. I have all these cuts in it. Like I said, you could just hit uh, your, your control K and cut it if you wish to, but I kind of like this method controlling exactly where I put, put this. Okay, so I've got a, an edit here for inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. I'm going to go to the very beginning here, and I'm going to play through this. Let's, let's add a cross dissolve on that, control shift D or cross fade. Uh, the beginning, so it fades in. And to me, the crickets for being indoors sound a bit loud. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit G for gain, and I'm going to go negative, uh, let's go like negative 8 and see what we get there. And turn down the waveforms. Let's play through it. And that's better. We can hear the room tone. We can hear the crickets outside. But as she stands up and walks over, the crickets might start getting louder as she gets closer to the window because she's getting closer to the window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control as she starts walking right about there, and I'm going to start a keyframe right there. Control or command and click a keyframe and go to the end as she gets close to the window. Let's find it where she finally gets to the window right about there. So at the very end here, I'm going to do a control click, and I'm going to turn that up a little bit. So now it will get louder as she gets closer to the window. And now as we go outside, we want this to be even a little bit louder. I'm going to hit G for gain. I'm going to go 3 and add that 3 decibels louder. So as, she, as it cuts outside, the crickets are nice and clear and loud. I'm going to want to gain this clip here.
Oh, we had a cow move there. Anyway, so as as she walks away here, uh, let's start turning it down. Let's find where she kind of gets away from the window right there, and we'll turn it up as she gets closer to the window here. Turn that down a little bit so there's a little bit of adjustment. And I want that a little quieter. And it gets quieter, she gets further from the window. So I'm going to continue doing this from beginning to end, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. All right, I've done my mixing from beginning to end. So one last thing I probably want to do is I want to add a little bit of an effect to make it sound like it's a little bit more outside. I'm going to select this first clip. I'm going to assign that as a sound effect. And under sound effect, it gives me some reverb here. I'm going to select this, pull it down. I'm going to tell it that it's outside reverb. So let's solo that. And actually, I'm going to move this next track because it's a little bit louder. I'm not going to show you what the reverb does here. We'll change, make that one a sound effect as well. Outside, we're going to make it outside reverb. And let's listen. Turn it off and on. Makes it a little more faint. Makes it adds a little re reverb to it, so it's just very subtle and it sounds and it gives it that uh, kind of the way an outside sound effect should sound. And I'm going to do that to the rest of these sound effect. And I can actually select a range of them. I'm going to select these two here, and you hit sound effect, and we can change add that uh, outside reverb, and it changes it adds it to both of those clips, all the clips you have selected. So I could have actually just selected this whole thing like this, gone up and chosen outside reverb, and it would have added that effect to every one of those clips. Therefore, you don't have to do it individually. So the next step I'm going to be working on, first of all, I'm going to hit shift minus and I'm going to make these tracks smaller because I'm running out of space down here. I'm going to turn off the solo on that track and I'm going to move my source patching to the next one and we're going to start working on audio track three. So audio track three that we're going to be working on is a little bit more um, ambient noise and sound effects we're going to go through here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the track size on my uh, A3, the, the track that I'm working on. I'm going to move my mouse over that and I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and scroll up on my mouse and that increases the size of that track. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to find a file. I've got one more ambient noise I'm going to add. And I'm going to add this to my outside uh, to my outside environment here. I'm going to double click on this file right here that I've got. And this is actually just like outside ambience. We had crickets. And I'm going to add layers of this here. to have a little bit of mild city noise even with a car passing. So, so kind of very quiet and ambient noise. And here's the car passing. I'm going to take that audio there. Let's let's go to the beginning of this audio here. I'm going to put I for endpoint. I'm going to move over to the portion where she sticks her head outside the first time here. And well, the camera moves outside. And I'm going to put an endpoint here. Endpoint, arrow down to go to the end of that edit. And arrow to the left one frame. So I'm on the out frame, uh, out point, the, the very final frame of that clip and put O for out point. So this is a three point edit. I've got an endpoint, endpoint, and an out point. I hit period. And drop that ambient noise in, and let's see what we've got now. Let's see what. Um, and I'm, as I'm playing this, I'm going to hit mute and unmute, and you kind of see the difference between not having the ambient noise there and having it there. Let's go to the beginning, and here's the mute. You can hear that cut out, and you hear that ambient noise. Uh, I kind of like that level of ambient noise there, but it adds, adds a little bit more texture to this. Now we've got two uh, environmental sound effects outside. We've got the chir uh, crickets chirping and the outside noise. I'm going to add that to my next little section here. Let's go right down there. I'm going to put I for endpoint because she sticks her head outside again. Arrow to the left, out point, and period. Drop that into that section there as well. But uh, let's go and select this clip. Select it move over to our essential sound panel and click sound effects. It's our sound effects and this is an outside reverb and I can do the same to this as well. I couldn't do the same thing to find that as sound effects and I'm going to pull down and say this is outside reverb. So now as we play that crickets together with the outside ambience I like the sound of that. Now let's move on to adding a little bit more sound effects here to kind of add layers to this. I'm going to hit Shift minus to get everything compressed down. I'm going to go to my audio track four and we're going to start working on, it on a new one here. And hold down Alt, move over, hover over this track and scroll up while I'm holding down Alt or Option and it increases the track size. All right, the next type of sound effects I'm going to add, I'm going to play through this and find a spot where I want to start adding sound effects as we move through our video here. The first sound effect that I kind of see that we need is the knock sound which we took out, cut it, somebody was knocking on the wooden set and we didn't want the wooden set noise and there we want glass noise. So I'm going to find one here I'm going to use, I'm going to go knock glass 5, double click on it and that brings up a few instances of somebody knocking on glass. Let's listen to the second one here. And I like that, let's go to the beginning. 
I got three knocks in a row there. So I'm going to hit over out point right there and I've got this range selected. I'm going to move down into my timeline and find right where I want that knock to happen. Let's move this back to where she's looking at the book. Hit period to drop it down inside my timeline. And now I have that sound effect in my timeline. Let's get it exactly where we need to. Let me get, move back and play. And notice that sound was really loud. It was around a negative nine on the decibel scale, which is really, or it was around a negative six on the decibel scale. So that's very loud sound. That's getting up into the very, very loud range. So I'm going to hit select that, hit G for gain. I'm going to take it down by negative, let's say about 10 decibels and see how that sounds. And still that sounds maybe a little too loud. So hit G, negative four, and hit enter. And let's listen to that. And I like that. But now we're going to select this clip. We're going to tell it that this is a sound effect. And I'm going to add room reverb to this. Now let's listen to that. Let's solo it and listen to it with and without the reverb. That's with the, that is with the reverb. Turn it off. And you can hear the difference. That gives it more of a natural sound instead of this like perfectly recorded sound. So I hit the, turn the reverb back on the re room reverb. And we have... And I'm soloing this, so the only thing we can hear is that channel right now. So I'm going to turn that off, and now listen to it all together. And I like that. Sounds good. So I'm going to do the same for the rest of the knocks here. I'm going to go through and add the sound, sound effect layer, then we'll get to the next part. Okay, I've added some more sound effects on this level and added some more layers. And let me show you a couple of things that I've done. I did, of course, add the knocks with a little bit of uh, room reverb. And I did some uh, more sound effects outside here. As she looks outside, we got the crickets, the uh, road ambient noise from outside, and a dog bark. There we go. We're just adding some more layers to this to kind of bring this to life. So one other thing I'm going to do here is I could probably add some footsteps as well. Footsteps will be a little bit different because usually a Foley artist is doing those. Let me go shift minus if you're, if you're working on a big production. But, uh, since we're just kind of doing our sound mix inside of Premiere here and we don't have a Foley artist, uh, when she gets up and walks is another sound effect that I may need to add here. As she gets up, let's watch this. Right here, she puts her feet on the ground and I need a sound of her feet hitting the ground there. So I did find some footsteps here. I'm going to double click on that. Uh, I'm going to go through and listen here. I've got some footsteps going. I'm going to use this first sound when her feet hits the ground. This can get a little bit of tedious and take a little bit of time if you're not using a, if you're, if you're actually adding your own foley to this. Here's my first one. I'm going to grab that out point and I'm going to change my source patching to the next track down so I don't delete any of the other clips I'm working with and I'm going to hit period to drop that in on the approximate location but let's show you how to make this uh, lined up perfectly. I'm going to move over the track that I'm working on and hold down option and scroll up. There we go make that track big so we can see the waveforms here. Let's get beforehand and this is going to be a little bit mistimed so it came a little bit late so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the exact frame where I want that waveform to be right there her toe starts hitting we want the beginning of this foot sound on the ground there so we need to line this beginning up with this playhead here i can select this clip hold down alt or option and arrow backwards and this moves one frame at a back at a time backwards it nudges this clip backwards i'm going to go right where that audio is starting right where her feet hit the ground let's listen to that and that sounds good but it's too loud but it, uh, but the timing looks good so I'm going to select that, hit gain, G for gain, and I'm going to go 9 and minus about, let's go about negative 10 decibels and see what that sounds like. And that sounds better. You can hear her feet hit the ground now. So now what I'm going to do is the same kind of process here. I'm going to take these uh, little footsteps here. I'm going to do in point, out point, and I'm going to line these up with their footsteps here. And if you did this for an entire movie, this would be a lot of extra, a, a ton of extra work. Uh, it's, it's worth it for just kind of these small scenes, which is walking back and forth, just to add a little bit of texture sound to this. And hit period, drop that in, and once again, I'm going to line that up. Well, it looks like the tip of her toe hits the ground, like right there, on that exact frame. And if I zoom up here, plus, plus, I'm going to select this clip and option and arrow it to the left to nudge it over so it lines up with my playhead's position right there. Now as I play through this, there's a footstep and I'm going to keep doing that for each uh, subsequent uh, footstep until I'm done with this layer and we'll come back and show you that. 
Okay, now that I'm done, I'm going to, I've, I've added all the footsteps in, I'm going to select them all here, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to turn these all into sound effects, and I'm going to add room reverb. And the room reverb is checkmarked, and it's added to those files now. And uh, let's listen to a little bit of footsteps here, and I've got through that, that throughout the entire scene. And those are too loud, so I'm going to do kind of a mass gain. This is all the same sound effects. I'm going to hit G for gain. I'm going to turn that down about 10 decibels. And I'm going to turn that down about 8 decibels. And let's listen to it and see how that sounds now. And that sounds much better. That sounds like very subtle footsteps with bare feet. So I've done that layer now, and uh, the only other thing I'm going to add now, I've got all these different sound layers, a nice sound mix going, I'm going to add music. So I'm going to hit Shift minus, and then I'm going to change my source patching to the next track. I'm going to hold down Option and scroll up on that track so I have enough room to kind of look at the at the waveforms here. Now I've collected some music from uh, Incompetech.com. That's a royalty-free that is a royalty-free music site that you can grab music from to fit your themes. If you go to the cinema themes, you'll find some good uh, tr eerie tracks you can use. You have all different types of uh, action and humorous and a whole bunch of different things there. Um, but you just have to title them in your credits when you use their music. So I'm going to hit music. I'm going to go down to my music uh, window here and listen to a couple different clips. I'm going to play this clip. That sounds pretty good, but let me find, see if we can find something else here. I like that music, but it's pretty loud. So maybe we want to do this when the knock first happens. So we're playing through the movie here. And the knock happens, so I want to add some music getting creepy there. So I'm going to grab the beginning of this song here, I for endpoint, play through it a little bit. And notice this comes in really loud. I'm going to hit O for kind of an arbitrary uh, out point, hit period. And uh, let's get this thing timed up properly. So when the knock happens, I want the music to start there. So I can just actually grab this and drag it over to my playhead. And let's see the timing works out there. I like the timing, but the music is very, very loud. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit G for gain. I'm going to go negative 10. Enter. And now let's listen. I like that level right about there. And I like that level right about there because we can still hear the music and we can still because we can still hear the ambient noise uh, on the other sound effects tracks and we can hear the music, music as well. With this selected, I'm going to go up and select music. I do have a couple options with music. You have your level down here, but I like to use the G for gain. But you have this ducking um, feature right here. If you select that, what this actually does is it pulls down certain frequencies that it shares with different other with other types of audio here. So this way you don't have to turn your music way down. You can have your music loud because it will not share frequencies with uh, these things here. Dialogue, other music tracks, um, sound effects clips, ambience clips. So with those selections there, you can have the audio, it pulls out the frequencies to match the frequencies of those specific tracks there. And if we wanted to do a duck against, I guess our ambient noise, I can click that and it will kind of pull out the frequencies that it shares with the ambient clip and it will make this audio not sound like it's overpowering uh, that sound effect. It works really well with dialogue. And the difference is going to be subtle on there, but I'm going to keep mixing this audio here. Let's, uh, like right here at this point, I may want this audio to fade out before the knock happens again. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit, arrow down to land on the end of that. Control Shift A to deselect everything. Control Shift D to put a crossfade. So now we have that sound with the knock. The, mu the music comes in. And when she looks at the book, the mu music fades out. We can actually make that a little more gradual by grabbing this cr uh, fade, in, fade out and pulling it over and it, make, and it lasts longer now. And then when she knocks again, I'm going to use the same little section of music here and drop that in right there. So now the music comes up again when the knock happens. That's too loud. Select it, G for gain, negative 12. And there we go. 
So I'm going to keep adding music to this track here, and I'm going to mix it. I'm going to fade it in and out, and sometimes I'm going to mix two clips together, and we'll come back and I'll kind of show you what I've done. Okay, what I've done here is let's move my mouse over the, over this uh, window, and I'm going to hit the tilde key to make this go full screen and kind of look. I've got some uh, music in here that fades in, and that kind of fades out, fades back in, and i got it mixed for, for different levels for different sections of the movie. And I've selected these. I've gone to music, and I've added these as... Um, I've I added these as music tracks, and I told it to duck the audio uh, for the sound effects. In the dialogue, I will show you this and show you how music and audio and uh, and dialogue works. The ducking works really, really well. It kills the same frequencies that you hear in the dialogue, and uh, it doesn't make it sound overpowering, but it's still the same sound level that it's been playing in the first place. So the music track was the last one I've done. I'm going to play through it. I'm going to kind of get a final uh, mix on everything and make sure all my levels are where they need them, never hitting zero, keeping my average audio levels around negative 12. So for the final part of this I'm going to show the two-minute film that the students did and uh, play it through with the sound mix and show you how it kind of comes to life.